All right, so today I wanna to do something a little bit different. I wanna ask you how many snakes that you have watching this video. And I've actually had some people comment in my comments under my videos. They say, I'm terrified of snakes. I could never own one, but it's pretty fascinating watching your channel. Those people have zero snakes. I've had other people make a comment where they actually are buying their very first snake. Some people are buying multiple snakes with the intention of breeding. So it'll be kind of interesting to see the results. I actually went over to YouTube and went into the end cards, found out I can actually do a survey, and uh, what I'll do is I'll put a little link right up at the top, how many snakes do you have? You can actually click that, and you can vote. I think you can only vote once. You can change your vote if you click the wrong thing, but you can't vote more than once. It's just one per user. As a matter of fact, if you actually go in the comments section underneath this video, you can actually list out all the snakes you have. I think it'd be pretty interesting to see what everyone has. And what I want to do is I'm going to kind of go through all my snakes. I want to get a count of how many snakes I have. As a matter of fact, I don't even know because I'm always hatching out snakes and I'm selling them on the internet. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a count as far as all the ones that me, I'm going to personally keep and hang on to. I have probably about, I think about 15 snakes that I'm selling over on Morph Market. I'll kind of subtract those out and we'll get a kind of a rough number on how many snakes that I actually own. All right, so here is snake number one. This is Lucy, and she started out as kind of a pet, and I've actually been trying to breed her this year, but I'd say she's probably more of a pet. So I actually bought this snake to eat my old retired rats for my rat breeding operation. She weighs about 85 pounds. She is a really big snake. She's about 17 feet long and lives out here on my pool table. She's a reticulated python, 50% jampea dwarf, 50% mainland, and she is is a white albino, really beautiful snake. All right, so I wanna show you snake number two. This is my purple albino super dwarf reticulated python. And this guy went back on food and he's kinda, of, it's kinda of unpredictable. You actually have to open the tub with a snake hook because you definitely don't want this guy lunging out if he's in a crazed feeding mode. This is a really beautiful snake. He probably weighs, this is Sunny. He weighs probably about 35, 40 pounds. He is a purple albino. He is actually, uh, 37 and a half percent super dwarf, 50 percent jampea dwarf, and only 12 and a half percent mainland. Really awesome snake. This is actually the mate for Lucy that I'm trying to breed. All right, so over here in this rack, I actually have my female breeder ball pythons. I actually have another 20 snakes on the top and on the bottom. These are all the females. Some of them I'm breeding this year, but not all of them. And if we just kind of take a look at uh, kind of the condition of these, these, these are actually going to lay eggs here. They'll start laying eggs. I'm thinking in about 30 days, I should be getting some eggs about mid-March. As a matter of fact, it might be just a couple weeks, and I might start getting eggs. So so for example, like this one, this is my spider. Also has the jungle woman in it that really reduces the pattern. This girl actually laid eggs once and just kind of refuses to eat. Pretty much a really super picky mouser. She's actually taken a couple rats here lately, but the interesting thing is, is she's so picky. I don't know if I'll ever get this girl to lay eggs again. So some of these are just, you know, kind of like pets, just kind of waiting on them to breed. And this girl here, she fastened for a long time and then just started really feeding really well right before and during the breeding season, looking really big. This is my pastel calico female. I actually bred Bobby to this one and got some really cool bamboo calico combos out of this girl and this year I'm actually breeding it with my pastel desert ghost male hoping for some het desert ghost stuff which would be pretty cool all right, so that is a total of 22 snakes, plus I have another five up here, brings me to 27 so far. That's a lot of snakes. And essentially, I have I produced like 100 hatchlings all the, in this hatchling rack. I have another hatchling rack behind me that holds another 65 hatchlings. And out of all those, I produced almost 100. I, I held back just five. And four of those are triple head albino pied clowns, look pretty much like a normal. And then the only other one I really held back is is, let me see if I can get this one out for you. This is actually a lesser scaleless head male. Take a look at this beauty. This is actually um, the scaleless head. So the scaleless head gene has just a few scales 
missing from the top of the head. If you actually breed two of them together, you get a completely scaleless ball python. And this lesser is actually in the blue-eyed leucista complex, which brings me closer to eventually at some point producing an all-white snake with blue eyes with, with no scales at all. A totally scaleless blue-eyed leucista. That's kind of the end game of this one. It'll make a really good breeder. Breeding back into some of my scaleless head females. All right, so here is my last snake rack. This is my ARS 5040 rack. It's a 50 series tubs. And I actually went through and counted them. I have 26 snakes in this rack, bringing me to a total of 53 snakes in my collection that I'm actually using for breeders and holdbacks. And take a look at this. This is one I just pulled out. This is a bamboo calico. Look at how beautiful this is. And I actually produced a, a, a bamboo pastel calico one year and I saw it to a guy and it's probably one of my favorite snakes the bamboo with the calico this is like a really high expression calico really beautiful snake as a matter of fact this year i'm breeding this one this is a male i'm breeding it to a lemon blast which is a pastel pinstripe so i should be able to reproduce the one with the pastel in it so it's exactly like this except where the white is you get like a bright yellow instead of the white plus i'll be able to add pinstripe into the mix which is really cool. I don't know what this guy's doing. Stretching way out. <laughs> it's so funny. But some of these snakes, they're just so awesome. You just don't want to get rid of them. They're so beautiful, amazing snakes. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Cat Moore asks, What's a good snake to breed with a female blue-eyed leucistic? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, it's a pretty complicated question because remember, a blue-eyed leucistic is an all-white snake with blue eyes, but it can be made several different ways. For example, if you took a bamboo like Bobby here around my neck, if you breed a bamboo to a bamboo, you get a blue-eyed leucistic that's a super bamboo. And you can do the same thing with Mojave or Lesser or Russo or anything in the blue-eyed leucistic, I'd say that there's some exceptions when you start getting into, you know, some of the phantoms and mystic where you don't get an all-white snake, but a lot of times you actually do get an all-white snake. And the problem is, is I've actually been at reptile shows where people walk up to me and say, hey, check out this snake I bought. It's a blue-eyed leucistic. And I would always say, hey, that's pretty cool. What genes are in the snake? And they say they don't know. As a matter of fact, a lot of times the breeders don't even know what's in the snake. So for example, if I took the bamboo and I bred it to a Mojave, I could get a bamboo Mojave blue-eyed leucistic. I could actually breed that to something like a lesser Russo. So now we have four genes in the mix. You breed those together, you get a whole clutch of white snakes. And each of those hatchlings could have two out of four genes. You really don't know what they are until you actually breed it to something and prove it out. So there's a lot of breeders out there actually producing whole clutches of blue-eyed leucistics and it's a whole mix of all these different genes and you don't really Really know what you have but if I was actually know the genes in the blue-eyed leucistic so for example if you had like a super bamboo I would probably breed that to like a lemon blast I really like some of the lemon blast combos with the bamboos or if you had a super Mojave you could actually breed it to something like a super GHI and get all GHI Mojave's which is a really awesome snake it's almost a really black snake with really bright highlights right down the back it's really awesome. So it really depends on what is the genetic composition of your female blue-eyed leucistic. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.